Welcome to this week's segment of Dialogue Houston. I'm your host, Lawrence Payne. To our regular viewing audience, welcome. To those joining us perhaps for the first time here for HCC's TV Dialogue Houston, we can be found now every Tuesday and Thursday at 6 a.m. and again at 6 p.m., Saturday afternoons at 3 p.m. As always, in the top of our hour, let me thank you for your thoughtful calls, emails, and text messages concerning shows we've aired here on HCC's TV Dialogue Houston, but particularly your great ideas for guests and topics and subjects to be covered on upcoming segments of Dialogue Houston, because after all, this is your community affairs, public affairs show here on HCC TV now in its 25th year, going into its 26th year shortly here. And also, as we know, this coming year in 2020 is the 50th anniversary of HCC. And uh, we will have a great programming schedule for you in the 2020 new year. We're gonna look very in depth at some things past in the history of HCC, but we're also gonna look at the glorious future and what the future promises and the wonderful work that ACC has to do going forward for the population and generation of students that are coming to us now going forward. In fact, there are our future workforce. The city of Houston truly depends on HCC's producing that workforce and doing it in a way that allows all the industries to have the employees that they need for the future. It is that understanding of who we are as HCC, who the city is, and the growing, changing demographics of our wonderful community. It is, as we have said many times with our guests here on the on the set, Dr. Stephen Kleinberg, what does it mean to live and work in Kleinberg's Houston going forward with the changing demographics? We'll have Steve on, of course, again in April after he does the Houston Annual Area Survey for the 2020 season. We'll also have him on a couple of times after that because his book is finally coming out that we've been teasing him about for 20 years. He's been with book, with book for, the book is actually gonna be birthed and come out in May. So we'll have him on to talk about that. It's going to be a wonderful, glorious 2020 because it's going to look at the visioning. We're going to use and play off the 2020, having 2020 vision, to look and vision about how and what we want Houston to be and become. In fact, we're going to take the journey of a 16-year journey from 2016, from 2020 to 2036. Why 2036? Because in 2036, in a short 16 years, Houston will celebrate its bicentennial. So those coming up 200-year anniversary, what do we want Houston to be and become? What do we want it to, to be like, act like, feel like, talk like? How do we want it to take care of the least, the last, the loss of our society? How do we understand who we are as a Houstonians going forward? How do we understand the wonderful thing about looking at it from the ethical perspective of what is the fair and ethical treatment of all human beings? We have to, ask that, we have to answer that question. We have to come to some baseline understanding and agreement of what that looks like because we can't answer the other two questions, the antecedent questions that go with that without first having an understanding of what is the fair and ethical treatment of all human beings because then we can talk about that all human being lives matter and that all human beings are equal. That's what's ahead of us. That's our journey. That's kind of the roadmap that we're gonna be taking as we go forward. We thank you for these wonderful 25 years of being part of this journey. We look forward to the, you being part of the journey as we go down the road to see who and what we can and will become in service to our fellow human being, in service to the common good. This has been part of the hallmark of HCC since its existence and is gonna to continue to do so. To that end, I'm very happy and proud to have someone who understands that history, who understands that legacy, who has been deeply involved for 20 years plus now in understanding how to make that vision happen, a reality in the lives of students every single day. She's none other than Suzette Brimmer, who is now the Interim Dean of the Consumer Arts and Science. Before that, she was the Chair of the Consumer Arts and Science Division here at ACC. And Suzette, just so glad to have you. Thank you, it's great to be here. Welcome. This, is a, this has been quite a journey for you as well as the, as the college. Yes, yes, And yes. you've been here for a good part of that. Yes, I have. In helping to shape and make that happen. I uh, think so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know so, because I've been around as long as, long as you have, following that and, and, and chronolog chronologuing it. So let's, let's begin a little bit. There is some exciting news coming forward, which I think is just perfect because it fits into everybody's happiness because it has to do with food and you can always make people happy when you talk about food. We're about to, to give birth to a brand new culinary arts building. Tell us about that. Yes, we're very excited. Um, it gives us the, the potential to double our capacity. 
Um, and what's also just as equally as exciting is that we're going to have a demo kitchen. And what we mean by that, we're going to be able to invite chefs uh, in, in the Houston mm -hmm. community to come in, do demonstrations. We're going to be able to have a uh, learning uh, community with our surrounding community, have them come in for, let's say, short workshops right. to learn how to just do one particular item. And that the faculty has expressed a, an incredible interest and being able to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. So we're very, very excited about the new building. It's beautiful, it's state of the art. We've had uh, professional chefs come in and look at the kitchen. They're quite impressed and of course, most commercial kitchens are not the size right. of right. our kitchen. So uh, they're just a little bit envious of how, wonderfully they, how wonderful they're designed. I think they'll, everyone will probably want to be a part of it, come view it, see it, participate, be take in part of it. We actually had a, a kitchen sit here at one time uh, that we had a cooking yes. show. Yes. Uh, even did a few little things with HC, I mean, on Dialogue Houston with, with cooking. We may even do that again now going forward with the new, new thing. And that will be coming on board somewhere in, after the first of the year? That's correct, yeah. Okay. yeah. We'll be moving. We should be moved in by the end of this semester, okay. uh, meaning right before Christmas. Right. So we're really looking forward to starting off the, uh, the new semester in a new place. And let's talk about this whole food and food prep and that is such a growing industry. That is something we all gonna need and have. The restaurants in this city is just, we're blessed by having so, so many restaurants. You could eat a different restaurant every day here and never do it twice. It's uh, true. It's one of those cities. But because they employ so many people, and not only in the various chef rows from the sous chefs to the da da da, they employ so many people in the front of the house and the back of the house, that it is always a source of employment, but also a place to grow. You can move up the ladder within yes. those industries. Yes. Yes, because even when you look at the hospitality, uh, under mm -hmm. the hospitality umbrella, um, like I was just recently visiting a hotel, the Marriott Marquis. Uh, they are partners of ours with our internship right. and co-op classes. And so it was really interesting that, you know, to go in the bowels of that, um, that hotel yes. and see like the refrigeration, meet the chefs right. uh, in the different divisions and see their kitchens and then the, the uh, mass of people that they have mm -hmm. working. There's probably over 10 to 15 restaurants just in that one hotel, so it is pretty extraordinary. So we, we do feel that we are, I, I don't think we can graduate students soon enough to uh, supply the demand that Houston has for food. And I, I know part of that industry because I actually ran something called the Marriott Public Charter Hospitality High School in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. It was started by the Marriott Foundation to give young people a chance in the hospitality industry. Well, we ended up having a lot of uh, some of our graduates actually move to Houston to first attend ACC and then transfer to the Conrad Hilton School yes. at U of H. So that partnership I'm very aware of. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about not only Marriott, but the other major chains, when you get into, as you said, the bowels of a lit, large hotel, the back of the house, it is fascinating. Yes, it, it is. It is nothing what people think it is. It is, just, it is a fascinating operation. Yeah, it, it's, it's its own world. It's a city within a city, yes. basically. Yes, it is. And it to is. be able to be part of that and to be able to be uh, involve whatever level with the opportunity for all the different positions they have that you can move up. If you really want to move up in that industry, you can do it. Yes. But you have to come prepared, and we prepare them here. That's right. That's our job here. Because not only are we talking about the food and the chefs, it's all the other ancillary positions and jobs that go with that that we train also. That's correct. And that's an important piece. Because what's going to happen as we go forward, uh, and we have a wonderful graduate of ACC, you go. Yes. Tell us Her, about, tell us Hugo, about Hugo. Yeah, he, Hugo Ortega came to uh, HCC a number of years ago um, and did not speak English at that yeah, time. Yeah, he, he tells and, the story. And uh, yeah, we were able to work with him, make certain that he got his education. Uh, he started washing dishes, which um, all of our students have to learn how to wash dishes, yeah. uh, and just worked his way up from there. And I guess as we look at the, the new building, one thing about having a new, new, bright, shiny building, you get to invite so many people to come over to visit. You get to come, kind of like you say, come see us, kick the tires, come visit us yes. and understand who and what yeah, we are. You, you know, it's like building a new home, right. your dream home. Yeah. So you, you want to show it off. You want all your friends and family to come over. You want to cook a big meal. You want them to be there. So we're planning to have that open house in March. Um, where people can come in, come see the building, right. come taste some food, um, and see what see what we're doing. You may have to have a bunch of little mini openings because I'm oh, sure oh, once, yeah. the word, once the <laughs> word gets out, trust me, they're gonna they'll, they'll be there. 
So what do you see uh, after the building, after we invited them, we've done the kickoff, we have the opening, we have people in. It is something, though, that is a, uh, knowing how you and, and, the, and the college are going to work, it's a practical hands-on thing. Yes, so it you, is. So we want the community to come and be involved. We want to do stuff with them there at, at the building. Yeah, so part of uh, one of the things that we're working on developing is what we call a learning, communi uh, learning community. Mm -hmm. So that we can have people come in like for a one-day workshop or a couple of hours workshop come in, get a sense of what it takes to learn how to cook, let's say a yeast roll. Right, right. You know, just to, just to narrow some the- Some basic uh, good stuff. Right, right, yeah, just some good things. Um, we've, we've been currently doing some things in A-Leaf and mm -hmm. their, uh, their new technical college out there, uh, no, technical high school, school rather, right. but it, it, it looks like a college. It does, it does look like a college. Uh, and I've we've been did there, some, yeah. yeah, some culinary and pastry arts uh, one day classes and that's been pretty successful. So that's like our launching pad to be able to offer that in other communities. And currently, how many students are involved in the culinary? Uh, approximately 400. Oh, that's, a good, that's a good number. And growing. Oh, yes. Well, now we'll have the space to the even space grow to in yet. That's, that's yeah. what's so exciting. And I'm sure that uh, over the years, like I know, the, the wonderful partnerships we've developed with various restaurants, various commons, commissaries, et cetera, it's a great uh, network of relationships and partnerships, is it not? Y yes, it is. And it's so nice to be able to have the environment where you can have people come in. Uh, we have a class that's called a la carte, uh -huh. where the students uh, learn to cook gourmet meals. And it is a, it's divided into three sections where they're working back of the house, front of the house, and then also preparing and plating and serving, uh, serving the meal. So that's a class that we, we always, we have people who have been a part of this for over 10 years. Mm -hmm. Even some of our own administration. Oh, yeah, come because on, it, come it's fun. Argument. Yeah, it's, and the Honor College brings their students. Yep. We've added a, uh, a dining etiquette um, okay. for that, uh, particular on, on Thursdays right. uh, that we do in the fall just uh, for our honor students and for additional guests. So th this will give us even more opportunities to expand those programs because we'll simply have the space. There we go. We're going to take a small pause and break. We're going to pick up our conversation with Suzette when we come back. Uh, so please stay tuned and join us. We're going to dive a little bit deeper into this wonderful world of food. Everybody loves food. And we're going to talk about how you can be involved with the culinary arts here at HCC. Please stay tuned. We'll be right back. Saskia. She loves cars. Seriously, she whistles at them. So she's studying engineering at Houston Community College. After that, a four-year degree. Then it's off to the races. HCC, for everyone, anytime. When I was growing up, my mom was extremely tidy. We were trained to put things back where we got them from. One day, when I walked into my mom's house, I felt like I walked to someone else's house. There was stuff everywhere. And just growing up, the way I grew up, and to see this transition was very alarming. When Sean talked to me, it was a wake-up call, and that's when I went to the doctor. Travion. His mom went to Houston Community College, so choosing that was easy. 
Choosing what to study for more than 100 instructional fields? Not so much. HCC, for everyone, anytime. Welcome back to this week's segment of Dialogue Houston. You've been with us for the first part of the show. You know, we have a fascinating conversation with my guest, who is Suzette Brimmer, who is the interim dean of the Consumer Arts and Science here at HCC, and also, I will say, the lady that's going to help open the wonderful new Culinary Arts Building sometime right after the first year in March. Stay tuned. We're going to make sure you get invited to the opening because you're going to want to be there. It's going to be fascinating. Yes, it will be. Because anything to do with food in the city that's known for food can't help but be a great thing. That's right. It's oxygen. It is. It <laughs> is. And food in this city are kind of synonymous with each other. The restaurants, the, the variety, the ethnic group, the diversity. And, and I know that you have all that represented in the student body population, all those diversities. And, yes. that. and now to be able to cook the foods of their region, of their country, and to be involved in the preparation of that, that's got to be just a fun thing. Yes, it is. It is. It is in, in Houston, what's really neat about Houston is that it is the number one city for people eating out. Yeah, we do, yeah. yeah. We all do. We, yes. we love, yes, yes. yes. And, and you can find great food in service stations, which I think is yes, really pretty cool. Uh, yes, you can. Pretty cool. And we can actually name two yeah. or three of them off hand because we, uh, we attend, we go, yes. 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 Uh, and, but, and some of those have been birthed in service stations then moved on yes. because they were so great to end up with their own brick and mortar. That's correct. Uh, mm -hmm. and, the, and the food truck thing here, the phenomenon of the food trucks in Houston, and so many of them now have been so successful that they've moved literally to brick and mortar yes. stores, but they got started with their little food truck. Yes, and that, that, that is a great way to get started. Yeah. And also I think it's really interesting when you see like a food truck tour. Yes, yes. You know, big yeah. group right. and they right. just tour right. around the right. city. Yep. And, and, yeah, and I think there's a website for it. There you is. Actually there check is. To see you know, where they're going to be And there are located. lots now. There are lots yes. dedicated to just setting up the whole food trucks. So yes. I told somebody, I like the wagons in the, in the old Western yes, movie, yes. circling the wagons. <laughs> the campfire, in the, Right, yeah. you know, and everybody in the middle, and they're on the, on the, on the perimeter. Uh, but that's fun. Uh, I heard a phrase this morning on NCR, on NPR, rather, which I had to, just cracked me up. Uh, it's the, by Kroger, our wonderful friends at Kroger, who are very involved in the community. Uh, they're going with a new program where they're going to try to get a share of your stomach. Hmm. For all the people who are too busy and overly busy to prepare food, they're actually going to cook fresh food and deliver it to you while it's still fresh and hot. But I love that phrase is a new phrase. It's entering now our lexicon. Mm -hmm. Sh a share of your stomach. It's a visual I'm not sure we really want, but that's, right. that's OK. I know what my stomach looks like. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, a share of your appetite, as we were talking yes. during the break, maybe it's yes. better. Uh, but that just tells you where it's going to. The, the, right. the, the, the whole scene is moving toward fresh and, and organic and fastly prepared because nobody's cooking anymore, True. which is sad because some generations are losing those great family recipes and traditions that's yes. been passed down that even in the, this past Thanksgiving with a, a family who uh, went to, by their home, um, it's being lost by the next generation. Not only do yes. they not know how to do it because it wasn't passed on to the next one, the younger ones, don't, they don't want to do it. Yes. But, uh, you know, and, and being educated at HCC, that's something that we really pride ourselves on is keeping those things up. We've been very fortunate through our library and our librarian, mm -hmm. Erica Hubbard, to be able to have a large donation of antique ah, cookbooks okay. that we're in a process of digitally uh, preserving so right. that we can keep those recipes right. uh, for our students. And I, I think with the, with the diversity and ethnic breakdown here, a lot of young people, are, however, are just yeah, is kind of not either or is always both and, are very proud of their history and heritage. They want to cook their foods. They want to keep it alive. Yes. And having the ability, the availability of having the kitchen now and the culinary thing, I'm sure they're going to be in there whipping, whipping it up. Yes. Uh, so that's an important piece. Where do you see this going kind of long term and as we go down the road? Yeah, I, I, I can only see it growing. You've got 400 students now. You now have the space in the facility that could grow endlessly. Yeah. Yes, yes. Because it's, it's one of the few growth areas. Yes, yes, it, it's true. And also to be able to offer um, as much education as we possibly can, um, our program coordinator, Katie, uh, Chef Katie, she's working on programming, that short programming oh, wonderful. For, for, you know, for our students. Mm -hmm. So like if they learn how to do breads and rolls, 
but maybe they don't have enough time in their curriculum to learn how to do something where they're where the breads are painted or lacquered because for like for photography right. let's say this person gets into desserts and they want to be able to make them camera ready right you know that that's a class that we can offer um, are more artisan roles or mm -hmm. roles that take a longer time to ferment because of the natural um, grains that are used uh, in, in making these uh, these types of roles. So those are some things that we're really looking forward to having the space, the opportunity, and also the chefs to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, having a new building also attracts other people yes, it does. wanting to come and, and offer their services. Yep. So that's been, uh, that's been really neat. And the ability to, to offer a lot of workshops, as yes. you were mentioning, yes. and to invite the public to them. That's yes. important. Yes, yeah, our, our learning community. Okay, yes. all right. Uh, and please avail yourselves of the opportunity. I mean, you, we have the workshops. They're open to the public. You can come. Uh, some of them will be a few hours. Some of them will be a whole day. Yes. Uh, but come and avail yourselves of them because, you know, I think it also builds community in the large sense. It's the internal community of HCC, it's the external community of the larger community. When those two come together and interact, great things happen. Because as we know, those relationships and networks that are born out of those meetings together, and of course, breaking bread together. Yes. <laughs> it doesn't get any better than sharing a meal with somebody and breaking bread, I mean, uh, you know. And so you get to meet new people, you get to develop new relationships, and you get to do stuff creatively in the city. Yes. Uh, and I think that's really where we're headed more and more. Mm -hmm. uh, the diversity, the pluralism of the city and the pluralistic society, how we all begin to in interact together more and understand each other more, is going to be so important going forward. Uh, ACC has always played a role in that because the diversity here is just endless. I mean, yes. we probably represent every nationality and nation that there right. is. Right, right, that uh, there is, yeah, with right. Students, with students. And so the question becomes more and more to use it as that learning ground, as you said, that educational opportunity, learning communities, to bring people together and to do creative stuff. Yes. Because I'm going to use the building. I haven't figured out what my creative thing is going to be, but I'm going to use it for something and, oh, hold, yes. and hold something there because yes. it's just you have to. And the ability, when we talk in the next segment, we're going to be talking about dialogue and study circles and all that, to get people together to dialogue and to know their neighbor and to understand their neighbor, what better way to do it than over breaking bread. Yes, yes. I have just been inundated with faculty coming up to me saying, oh, you know, have a, do something for Valentine just for yes, couples, like yes. how to prepare a romantic yes. meal. Yes, indeed. I mean, it's, it's like I really don't even have to go far for no, research. The ideas no. are just coming, uh, just coming to me. Yep. So yep. That, uh, that also lets me know how even excited our own faculty Mm -hmm. you know, is, is about having it. Yep. And many, many moons ago when we had culinary in the San Jacinto building yes, on I the third that. floor, yep. uh, when a pastry art students would um, make bread and it'd be leftover bread, someone would just roll it down the hallway and in a cart, so, yes. Well, I mean, it's <laughs> funny you mention that because it brings back a memory. I had a workshop in that building down the hall, and when you, of course, when, you, when you're baking bread and you're baking, the smell of it, the, the aroma of baking bread and the just woofs all across the, yes. it was hard. I had to go down there and say, can I have a, can yes, I have a roll? Yes, can I have a piece, yes. And, what, and, and there was at one time, and all of us now who are dating ourselves in this next statement I'm about to make, remember those old fashioned yeast rolls? Yes. That we all had in school when we were in school that they made, that's what they were making that day mm -hmm. at the, in that building. And those were special, just brought back childhood memories. Oh, yeah, it, it, it's a staple. It our, is. Our yeah, students it was, still learn how yep. to And cinnamon bread. Oh, yeah, okay. So now we're going to have this food thing. <laughs> uh, you can join us. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the, the opening again. Uh, shooting for March yes. in the spring, uh, and I'm sure we'll let everybody know. The, the vision of the college going forward for this next 50 years. Uh, I know there's been a lot of talk with uh, the wonderful chancellor and his cabinet and all of you involved as the faculty and administrators. It's a wonderful vision that's been kind of laid out. Uh, it has so many parts and pillars and et cetera to mm -hmm. it, but it really is trying to make sure that it, it, the college is positioned going forward to not only serve the students and serve the community, but as you said so well, to also engage the community in the college. Yes. I think that's really the, the piece that, that excites me. Yes. Uh, the, you know, when you think about our population, and we have such a large percentage of students who come to us, and they are first-generation mm -hmm. college students, and there's a lot of fears with just coming coming to school, right? Uh, just trying to figure out where your classes are, yeah. um, 
just trying to figure out registration. And, and uh, what I am enjoying and have seen over the years, my years here, is that we have much more laser focus on how we're gonna help mm -hmm. our students make mm -hmm. that transition into coming to college, whether, whether it's a traditional age college student or someone who's coming for a second or third career. Right, right. So that, that, that is really exciting to feel that you are a part of that and yeah. able to make those type of changes. And in the culinary field, coming back for that second or third career is a real thing. A lot yes. of people who have wanted to be chefs who have wanted to be cooks, who have wanted to dabble in pastry creation and all this mm -hmm. stuff, this gives them an opportunity. Yes, yes, because there are certificates that yes. you, know, you can get in a semester or, or within right, a year right. um, that are you know, much more focused on a particular area, mm -hmm. like, like uh, rolls right, and right. breads and cookies, those types of things. You because know? You know, a lot of people, when they retire, this is, I've always wanted to be a chef, or I wanted to be a cook, I wanted to be in a restaurant. Well, this is your opportunity. Yes. You know, come do it. I mean, I know when I ran the, the Marriott School in D.C., uh, thanks to the Marriott Corporation, we had to end up doing workshops. Uh, the general managers were very gracious, setting up workshops at the hotels because the parents wanted to learn yes. how to do the stuff the kids were learning at school, but we didn't have the space. So we right. just opened up the hotels and the kitchens and ran Saturday workshops uh, for the parents to learn what the kids were learning. Yes. Because they eventually wanted to, so I'm, I think I'm going to end up doing something in, in this. But it was a great thing to do together because it's, it's something in that wonderful field because you've been in the consumer arts and so it's always about the creativity, whether it's art, whether it's fashion, whether it's food. It's always about the creativity. Yes. And to get people really excited about their own creativity and seeing that they have creativity and the passion to want to do it, it's always a great thing to see it kind of blossom. Yes, that is true. And, and you're right. And in, in culinary, you know, it's not just about cooking the food or using right. the right seasoning. It's it the just visual. as equally important as, yes, how, how does yeah. it look on a plate? Oh, the visual. I, yeah. lo I love the visual. Yes, because it's the eyes that yeah. would really helps you enjoy your meal. This has been a pleasure to have you on. And thank, thank you. you for this wonderful discussion and dialogue together. We're going to follow the opening of the building and we'll follow the invitations that come with it. Uh, we're going to figure out what we're going to do together uh, through Dialogue Houston and do other things to make sure people get into the building. To see us is to know us, to know us is to love us. To love us is to participate, to participate is to grow, to grow is to learn. To learn is to share and to share is to become part of this wonderful community called Houston that we're all beginning to understand has such rich diversity, opportunity. What does it mean to live and work in a pluralistic society? with people of all kinds of nationalities, races, distinction, and religion. It is just a great learning laboratory. The city itself is just a great learning laboratory. We must take advantage of that learning laboratory through these learning centers that we're going to create and learning opportunities. So we're going to get out of here for now. Uh, we look forward to you joining us in future segments of Dialogue Houston. And until then, as always, peace, power, and love. <laughs>